Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode from Ampro Engineering. This is the Midnight Pumpkin. If you saw the buyer's guide on the Tamiya lunchbox, you'll see a lot of similarities between this one and the lunchbox. And the fact of the matter is, other than the body, they are completely identical. The original Midnight Pumpkin was released in 1987, I think around December. And this is model 58070, but there are several variants of the Midnight Pumpkin. You've also got the Midnight Pumpkin Chrome Special Metallic Edition, which is 58363. That one has an entirely chrome body as well as chrome wheels. There is another variation of this, which is called the Black Edition, and that's 58547. And the funny thing about the Black Edition is the Black Edition has a black injection molded body. Unlike a lot of the colored editions that Tamiya makes, like the Black Edition Lunchbox, the Black Edition Pumpkin, I think, falls short because it's already a black car. And secondly, the wheels come yellow. This could have simply been a decal on the bottom corner of the box saying now with black injection molded body. A little bit about the Midnight Pumpkin. This vehicle did come out after the lunchbox and is also the first vehicle to sport this very, very nice Ford F100 body. This up until very recently was the only Tamiya to use this particular body. They recently did a low ride pumpkin version, which has the exact same body with a couple of additional holes in the hood, as well as in the rear to mount this on an M class chassis. Comically, Tamiya left the holes for the body mounts. Now I'm going to get to the body mounts uh, very, very soon. We'll, we'll talk about those in detail, unfortunately. In terms of a chassis, let's just pull the body. What you are going to have here is a very, very simple bathtub like chassis. And this is a derivative of the original Mitsubishi Pajero chassis that came out several years prior to this. The box stock kit is going to have pogo spring front shocks as well as rear shocks. They work exactly the same as the units on the grasshopper. So they're going to have a rod that protrudes through a hole in the chassis, in this case here where the oilfield shock is mounted. And uh, there's going to be a little rubber damper that stops it from overextending. Oftentimes people won't install the rubber damper on the shock shaft. And what that's going to do is allow the suspension to over compress and rub the body. So you often find pumpkins whose paint jobs are all kind of worn out around the wheel arch and that's because the front suspension is over compressing. The transmission on the Midnight Pumpkin is one of its highlights. This is an incredibly durable unit that's been used on countless Tamiyas. In fact, this variation of the transmission, which was originally seen on the Grasshopper, debuted on the Midnight Pumpkin. The reason I say the variation is that this version of the transmission has a much thicker axle tube here, which will prevent damage to the, well, at least help prevent damage to the transmission case under hard impacts, especially when the seven-year-old in all of us uh, launches it 15 feet into the air off of their second story balcony. You can also use this transmission in the Tamiya Hornet as it also lacks the small tab in the front, which would usually be used on the grasshopper to lock the transmission in place. This particular midnight pump and I upgraded a long time ago to have the fifth shock modification, which allows the transmission to kind of spring back. It was a modification that uh, I thought worked reasonably well. However, I didn't like chopping up the transmission case and uh, scavenging a random shock. This, I think, is an old friction takeoff shock from... I have no idea where it's from. Nevertheless, your standard Midnight Pumpkin is not gonna come with this. It's gonna come with a couple of springs that would be embedded in here that help the transmission from flopping around. Also in the rear, this is another one of my Ampro upgrades. Standard rear suspension is gonna mount very close to the axle tube. And please note that when you accelerate, the transmission will move forward and the motor will come into contact with the rear shock. That is not because you built it incorrectly, that is simply a result of the particular geometry on this vehicle. That will only happen with the stock motor mount and pinion. It has a very, very small pinion to increase torque, which will allow this vehicle to pop wheelies. And that is its parting piece is the fact that it's a wheelie vehicle. Looking inside the vehicle, we see that the servo mounts in the front and kind of at a strange angle. The standard speed control, if it were uh, equipped with the mechanical speed control, would be mounted here. And the secondary servo would go in this region here. This one does have a vintage ESC as well as vintage radio gear. And I do believe that any of the more modern kits are going to come with a Tamiya ESC. Please note that you may have some trouble fitting batteries to this vehicle. I use these soft case LiPos. These are 2S batteries. 
and they fit all of my Tamiya cars just perfectly. However, if you are going to run a hard case battery, you are going to have a lot of difficulty getting it to fit in here. What is more recommended is you run a smaller battery and simply wrap it with a little bit of foam and even like a 2200 or 2400 milliamp battery is gonna run an hour and a half with the standard silver can motor. These are the standard wheels and tires that this particular truck came with when I got it as my birthday present in 1991. They are available on lots and lots of Tamiyas. However, please note, these have the same five lug bolt pattern as a Hornet or a wild one would have. I mentioned body mounts earlier. These body mounts are some Ampro reproductions because the standard body mounts to say that they are garbage is an understatement. So the standard body mounts, this is an original body mount, has these little slots and it has to do with the fact that it's pulled directly from the mold in this orientation. That's why they exist. They are remarkably weak and they always snap right in this area. This is the front body mount. This is the rear body mount. These original body mounts also have another fundamental flaw. Note the orientation of the body pin. When installed, your cotter pin will come into contact with the body and scratch it. So it's important that you cut off the end of the cotter pin for the front to make sure that it actually doesn't scratch the body. My Ampro ones, you can see I actually reoriented that so that they uh, do not intersect the body. These body mounts are going to be endless trouble for you if you have a Midnight Pumpkin. So it's imperative that you replace them with something aftermarket. I don't care whose it is. The most ideal one that you can find are the aluminum ones. They tend to be a little pricier for the Midnight Pumpkin, but they're worth their weight in gold. Problem is these body mounts are not available by themselves from Tamiya. They come on the same tree as the tailgate and the front grill uh, insert here, this, this plastic piece, not the chrome. The truck is exceptionally durable given the fact that these are fairly flexible plastics. The arms, the suspension, the chassis, they're all very flexible, so they're not that susceptible to breakage. Even the body, even though it is a much firmer ABS, is quite robust. You're also going to lose your taillights immediately. These do protrude off the tailgate. And speaking of tailgate, if you have an original Midnight Pumpkin, it's going to say F-O-R-D on the back and... I believe you'll also get the Ford badging on the decal sheet. Re-releases, uh, I don't know what licensing issues to me I had, but these are all pulled as well as the decals. And speaking of decals, this original truck came with an optional decal. Now this one here, I don't know if you're aware of this, the Midnight Pumpkin was known as Cindy's Midnight Pumpkin. Cinderella, of course, being Cindy, and Midnight Pumpkin being, well, come on, I think everybody's well aware of the book Cinderella. I am not certain that the re-release pumpkins have this decal. I think they just have the profile of the pumpkin carriage, but I'm not certain that it comes with this. The decals themselves are quite a pain in the butt to install because you'd have to do a lot of cutting to get them all to seat properly. And on this particular version here, I did cut them out on the inside. Otherwise you're going to have kind of a, I don't know, Kind of a weird area where there's a clear decal. I really don't care for that. Hood decals aren't too bad, but these corner decals are always a nightmare trying to get them to seat nicely around these areas. Usually it's because of the compound curvature of this fender coming in here and coming in over here versus the flat decal. The back is a pain, but not as bad as this. I highly recommend that if you're going to look at your pumpkin more than drive it, at least the body, that you do clear coat the shell after you apply the decals because they always seem to want to peel. This body was painted in around 1994 or 95 as a secondary body from my original Midnight Pumpkin shell. So I painted and applied the decals and applied the clear coat well over 20 years ago and it still looks factory fresh. So I very much recommend that. If you are going to really bash the pumpkin, I very much recommend one of these Lexan shells. This one is, I believe, by Parma. There's a Parma sticker there, so I have to assume that. Uh, this is quite old. I think I got this in the late 90s. I don't know who currently makes them. Usually Team Blue Groove has a good selection, but I would really recommend getting one of these for around $20, as oftentimes the amount of effort it takes to really detail this body isn't worth the fact that upon one rollover, you'll destroy all the paint in many of these areas and scratch the chrome. And you know, it all depends on what you want to use it for. The truck is 112 scale, so you may need to be very careful just picking a random shell because most body shells are going to be too small for this truck.
if you get one, what do you need to upgrade? Now, I want to stress that let's say you're a parent looking at one of these toys for your child. Please don't think that you need to dump another $200 in aftermarket upgrades because that is simply not the case. What I would very much recommend is ball bearings because they're very inexpensive. And if you do have any additional money left in the budget, oil-filled shocks are a brilliant upgrade, but please do not think you need them. Uh, if you hand the remote control to this to a five or six year old, they're not gonna care about any of that stuff. This is going to bring a smile to their face despite the fact it could use a lot of additional upgrades. If you are going to give it to a child, this is also not a difficult car to have them build themselves. Even anybody with minuscule mechanical capabilities will be able to put this thing together. The instructions to the Midnight Pumpkin are simply superb and they're very easy to assemble with only a couple of basic tools. Now the question is, do you wanna get one? For the collector, if you are to me a collector, why do I have to say anything? You already have one. How can you have a collection without a Midnight Pumpkin and a lunchbox? Unlike the lunchbox that came in a dozen different varieties, the Midnight Pumpkin unfortunately didn't get that. For the collector, you probably would want to go for the chrome one simply because it's a little rarer, the body's a lot cooler, and I think ultimately it's going to be worth a lot more in the future. For those of you who want to bash this car around, I, I must remind you of my video with the Tamiya Hornet versus a more modern car of around the same value by any kind of newer RC car manufacturer. You, know, you can get amazing cars from Traxxas for about the same price as you could one of these. When it came to the Hornet, its performance would pale in comparison to anything modern. However, the Midnight Pumpkin, like the Lunchbox, doesn't have that problem in my opinion. If you give this car to an eight-year-old and another eight-year-old down the street has a Traxxas slash running on 3S power, your child will take this car out to the street with his friend or her friend down the street. They're going to see it. They're going to come over with their ridiculously fast hopped up slash and they're going to pop a wheelie with this car and everybody's jaws are going to drop. The fact of the matter is this is a terrible RC car in terms of handling. It loves to flip over. It's terrible going off road. It has miserable suspension. The steering sucks. But the fact of the matter is none of that matters because this is the most fun RC car that has ever been created. It's more stable than the Wild Willy. It's way more robust than the Wild Willy. And I think it has a little more charm than the Wild Willy 2 and some of those other wheelie cars. So for anybody that wants to bash this car, absolutely it is begging for it and i don't care if you're a 10 year old or an 80 year old you're going to put a battery pack in this car floor it and you're going to spend the entire day going back and forth down your street uh, on two wheels well folks thank you all so much for watching as you can tell i absolutely do adore the midnight pumpkin and all of the cw01 cars i think they're a ton of fun and to anybody that thinks rc cars are not toys this is the definition of a toy and i could not be prouder of that if anybody has an rc car out there that they think is just as much fun or more fun please leave a comment i would love to know what you all think that is all from me thank you all so much for watching you all know that i have instagram and facebook please don't forget blue pinto who lets me use all of their songs in my videos and you know where the links are thank you all so much and we'll see you next time